Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Savage States of America. All be seated, please. Rest comfortably in your chairs, in your cars, in your prison cells. Donald Trump will be with us in the next hour. And believe me, the questions uh, for today have never been asked before by anyone. I can guarantee you that. No one... This is not a softball interview. I like Donald. He likes me. I've supported him longer than anyone in the media. In fact, I was the first to interview Donald Trump in radio on a regular basis. January 10th, 2011. We have the tape, incidentally. For those of you who doubt everything that anyone says, all of you cyber warriors out there who sit at home hating everyone who's done better than you. The fact of the matter is I've been supporting Donald since he announced for one reason. The country's in trouble. The country is in trouble. We need a strong man to take on the enemies of America. I've seen this from the get-go. Whether he passes the litmus test of purity, I, I can't say. No one passes this purity test. No one is pure. No one's 100%. And all the current enemies of Donald Trump who've attacked him, the National Review in particular, uh, have been attacking me for years, by the way. I don't know if you know this. They were no fans of Michael Savage because they don't own me. I am an independent. They don't own me. They don't like me. They're afraid of me. Nevertheless, Donald Trump will be here in the next hour. You'll answer. You'll hear questions that you've never heard anyone ask. You're not going to believe it. I wouldn't say this to you and then disappoint you because you're going to say, oh, you promised and you didn't deliver. Wait until you hear some of the questions that I'm going to ask. Now, before that happens... I have another announcement to make, which is I, psychically amazing timing. Just today, we announced my new ebook, Diseases Without Borders, where I explain the origins of viruses like the Zeta virus and their impact on the U.S. and what you might do to build up your immunity against viral diseases. In plain English, it's an ebook. Its pub date isn't until next month. It's not a huge, big release, but it's a very important one. Dr. Michael Savage, Diseases Without Borders. If you want to learn more about it, go to michaelsavage.com. And I think any intelligent person, even the Doubting Thomases, will want to read what I have to say. I don't just make things up. I use references for my statements. Meanwhile, in the news, an outcry after refugees stabbed Sweden's social worker. Here she was, a do-gooder, a liberal do-gooder, and she worked with the poor immigrants. Well, one of them gave her a little stabbing and killed her. That won't stop the Swedes, of course. There are no Vikings anymore. Those who are Vikings are in prison. All of the good Vikings are in prison in Sweden, run by a bunch of ninnies and sissies, like all of the ex-great Nordic nations. Ninnies and sissies running Nor Norway, Sweden, Denmark, ninnies and sissies. And in Italy, the great Italy, oh, the Italians will stop them. Yeah, the rugged Italian. What rugged Italians? What rugged Italians? There's an invasion of 400,000 new immigrants coming in the next few weeks. Linked up from Breitbart on michaelsavage.com. Take a look at them. Take a look. At, if, if they look weak to you, the immigrants from Somalia, you better lock your women up behind closed doors in Italy. That's all I can say. And where are the leaders in Italy and Sweden and Norway and Finland? Where did they go? Why are they afraid of the sissies and the ninnies who have told them that they can't stop the, the immigrants? Of course you can. Your ancestors did. That's why you had a nation which great, with great cathedrals, great art, great music, great science, great achievements. Cities built because of your ancestors. And look what you've given away. Just what's happening here in America because of Obama. I have words for him I can't even use. I have words for him that I choose not to use. But nevertheless, there it is. That's what's coming here unless we get someone to stop it. Feds foresee $30 trillion debt. $30 trillion debt. Looming tax hikes and Obamacare. 
That's the thin man, the smoking thin man in the White House. That's that's the legacy he's going to leave behind him. And who's waiting in the wings on the other side? Did you see that town hall last night? I watched it for five minutes after Teddy's cardiogram. I didn't feel very good to begin with. I just sat in the living room with the dog, stroking him, knowing that inevitably, you know, the way of all flesh and all that. I don't mean tomorrow, but, you know, I watched the cardiogram. I didn't know they did cardiograms for dogs. I saw him for my father before he died. And there was this wonderful doctor, his pet doctor, holding the dog down. Three women held him down. He let out a whine. I never heard him give a quiet, low whine. It cut right through me. I couldn't do anything. You know, he was crying. He was scared. It sounded like a porpoise in distress. It was on that level. It was like made only for me to hear. It was like, is that sound real? So I turned the thing on with the dog, just comforting him after the cardiogram thing, where we found out he has a mitral valve. Oh, irregularity and leakage and a little blood flow problem and this and that. And there I look at the so-called town hall meeting, an infomercial for the Democrats. I would say shame on CNN, but I never had any question about them having shame. They have no shame. Anyone would employ the people they have has no shame. And there he is, the street communist from New York, Bernie Sanders, saying, yes, we will raise taxes. He wants to go beyond Obamacare. He wants to adopt a single-payer health system. That means immigrants, illegals, legal, doesn't matter. Maybe he should give every person who visits a doctor not only free care, free drugs, but let's say a $100 tip for going to the doctor. What's the difference? It's Bernie Sanders. I want to, I want to talk to billionaires and uh, the billionaires. Millionaires and billionaires. All the millionaires and billionaires who I've uh, envied all my life. Those with better wives, uh, better jobs, and better shoes. I've hated them all my life because I have a dirty suit and I look like hell. But the fact is, is that God made me this way, and God, as you know, doesn't exist, but I do exist. And when I become president, I'm going to tax those people, the millionaires and the billionaires, so they have filthy shoes like I do and an ugly wife. We will raise taxes. Yes, we will. And he's surging in the polls, that's all. New figures show sex assaults on women in 12 of Germany, 16 states on New Year's Eve. Where have all the good Germans gone? They're run by sissies and ninnies. Germany's been taken over by... The enemies of Germany. I said this to you many times about Merkel. Hitler, the evil Hitler, the evil Hitler invaded surrounding nations to impose Germany's will on those nations and to populate those nations with Germans. And now we have Merkel, like Obama, invading their own nations, invading their own nations with third worlders to populate their nations with third worlders. Tell me it's not a crime. Tell me it's not a crime to do this to a nation. Well, it is a crime. 855-400-7282 is uh, the phone number if you care to join the conversation. I was the first to interview Donald Trump in radio on a regular basis. We have the interview going back to 1-10-2011. And we're going to play snippets of the earlier interviews with you for reasons that you will see when we start playing them. Leading up, of course, to the next hour, where we have a live interview with Donald Trump. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something I never ask you to do. I've always ignored this. And that is to go on your social networking sites, whether it be tw tweeting or Facebook. And would you please tell them to listen to Michael Savage today and to hear Donald Trump, because you're going to hear something you've never heard anywhere else. I, if I don't deliver, I'll pro I promise you that I will deliver on that promise. The questions that I will ask him, some of them at least, you've never heard before. They're not extracted from anyone else's show. And again, please visit michaelsavage.com. It was just put up 30 minutes ago. Just published as an e-book. It won't even be out for a week. Diseases Without Borders. New York Times bestselling author, epidemiology expert, Dr. Michael Savage, explains the origins of viruses like the Zeta virus and their impact on the U.S. now and what you can do to bolster your own immune system. Back in a minute. I think today is going to be basically all of the, uh, it's all Trump all day today. I mean, he's on in the next hour. But when I look back on the interviews that I've done with him and the guys who work for me, great guys, they went back and they found out that I interviewed him in January of 2011. And one of the questions I asked Donald Trump was, are you running for president? I didn't even know. I, I think he said no. Well, we'll have to see. He wasn't even, <clears throat> he wasn't even committing yet. And we're going to play a piece of that. 
We're going to play a piece of some of the other interviews leading right up to, to the interview today. It's an amazing day because we're down to the wire. And incidentally, you have to know this. Our political system is so corrupt with these primaries. Don't give up hope. If Trump should lose Iowa, which could happen, I hope he doesn't, but he could. And then he loses New Hampshire, which could happen. Don't think he will, but it could. He could still win the presidency. Bill Clinton, I want to remind you, lost both Iowa and New Hampshire in the primaries and still won the presidency. Did you know that? Okay, so it can happen. We have a very crazy uh, Byzantine electoral system in this country. Just, you know, as Casey Stengel said, it's not over till it's over. It's only just begun, by the way. So let's do this. Robert, please run the interview from January 10th, 2011, the first time I recall I ever interviewed Donald Trump. We'll just run it for a sec, a uh, minute or so. Joining us right now is Donald Trump. Run the country like a business, not an empire. There's only one man I know who can do it, and that is Donald Trump. Donald, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thanks for being with us. How are you, Michael? You're a piece of work, that I can tell you. Well, now we don't know what you really mean when you say that. But but look, when you and I spoke yesterday, I, I asked you straight up. I didn't mince words. I said to you, where do you stand on tariffs with regard to Chinese goods? And you didn't blink. You didn't mince words. Tell the audience what you think should be done. Well, look, nobody is hurting outside of OPEC this country more than China. What China is doing to this country is absolutely a, a sin, and it shouldn't be allowed, and somebody has to speak to them. Somebody called me last week. The head of China is coming next week to see the president. And they said, what message would you have that the president should give? I said, the president should cancel the meeting and immediately cancel the meeting hmm. until such time as they stop manipulating their currency, et cetera, et cetera. Because when they manipulate their currency, our, co our companies cannot compete with theirs. They cannot just can't. compete. Beyond labor, beyond other things, they can't compete. Did he, oh, did he mince words? Did I mince words? Did I just do a puff piece interview in 2011? You decide for yourself. Robert, is it possible for you to move the tape forward and ask him, get to the point where I say, are you running for president? Is there any way to find that for the next segment? For the next segment, we'll find that one. In the interim, 855-407-282 is the phone number. Headlines, teen refugee arrested in stabbing death of Swedish social worker. The victim, a 22-year-old woman, was attacked Monday at the refugee center near Gothenburg, the alleged attacker was restrained by other residents until police arrived. It was messy, of course, a crime scene with blood. The perp had been overpowered by other residents. People were depressed and upset. They didn't identify the suspect or his nationality, but he was a resident of the center. Well, that would mean he was an immigrant, which houses unaccompanied minors between the ages of 14 and 17. Swedish media identified the murderer suspect as being 15 years old, and the victim, a 22-year-old girl named Alexandra Mazer, who has a family from Lebanon. But here's the punchline. It is so terrible. She was a person who wanted to do good. She wanted to be good. And then someone murdered her when she's doing her job. One of her cousins, who was not identified, told the Express tabloid in Sweden. All of you do-gooders out there, be very careful. You are being exploited in ways you could never imagine. And you're listening to a former social worker who was also once an idealistic young, young liberal. Trust me, you're just being used. You're a stooge and a tool. Let's go to some of the callers. Let's go to Harry on KSFO in San Francisco. What's on your mind, Harry? Yeah, hi, Michael. You know, I'd like to uh, uh, break open the topic of the word conservative, the word concept. That words are important. The word conservative has no meaning anymore, has no usefulness. It's used by uh, anything that is an extreme uh, left wing. Paul Ryan says he's a conservative. Donald Trump says he's a conservative. Everybody else is like a default uh, catch-all term. And I think it should be replaced by constitutionalist. I think that's the new... I say word. that for another, please, for another another show. Let me explain something to you. Donald Trump is neither a constitutionalist nor a conservative. He is, as far as I can tell, a moderate nationalist. I think that would be a more accurate description. Okay, what word would we use instead of conservative? I just said a moderate nationalist. Didn't you hear me? Moderate nationalist. For him, but I mean in general, Michael. I just gave you an answer. Moderate nationalist. What?